there you go. Uh, um, variation differences in the side sill, how that's assembled, um, under frame. Uh, this has a drop sill, which is the phase one, which is straight. So very excited to offer this in uh, the Genesis line, which will come with coil, coils um, inside the hoods, of course, removable, fully decorated, inside and out. And uh, that is uh, that is our announcement. These are available for pre-order as of today. So very excited about that. What's the, uh, what's the potential schedule on these? As with any products, we're looking at 12 to 13 months for uh, delivery. Um, who knows in today's environment, but that's what our factory has historically been able to achieve. Um, very excited. Um, is it from the design perspective, we're working really hard to get these to the NMRA compliant weight without utilizing metal coils. So all the weight is going to be hidden underneath so that these should run well, empty or loaded, which I feel is a, a great achievement for such a small car. Right. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so we have not talked about this. Yesterday we announced an F in Genesis F unit. We have brand new tooling on the Roundhouse F7. So this has been historically the old Globe Catherine Blue Box F7, um, which tooling was uh, beautiful back in the day, many years ago, um, but wasn't up to the day's standard. We still want to offer an entry level F unit so that uh, every modeler can have their unit. We want to do some upgrades. So we have retooled this complete model um, it has LED lights, it has the super weight, it is 21 pin ready. And um, we've reshaped the nose, reshaped the tooling so we don't have the seam line down the front. We've decided to remove the steam generator and we've actually changed the phase of this locomotive to be a little bit more popular than the, uh, when I say popular, it, there's more railroads that use this particular phase. Uh, one other feature that I really wanted to change is as modelers progress, we wanted to make sure that they could add the detail to their, their cars, uh, their locomotives. So we haven't done any molded on grab irons, so that you can drill and add your own separate grab irons. I have also added a second coupler mounting hole so that you can close couple things. Whereas the old F units, you had the football field of space between them when they, they coupled up. Uh, we've redone the pilot, we've redone the number boards, LED lights. So, very excited about that. The other detail I've done is we've always used a metal tab on the fuel skirt to, to attach it. I've left the metal tab, so if you want the new uh, upgraded drivetrain on an old shell, you can do that. But there are additional tabs on the inside that are holding the shell on so if you want to model something with a removed fuel skirt you can cut it off and you don't have to worry about that shell falling off the locomotive. So some minor upgrades that I think are going to make a big impact. A very nice starter model for anyone who wants to uh, model something that's not at a Genesis price. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I love making upgrades. Here's another upgrade that we have not talked about. The 52 foot mill gun. We have made so many of these that we used up the 100,000 shots of our tooling. We have made over 100,000 gondolas to the point where we needed to do them again. So we have, um, we of course want to continue to offer this model in the Athern line. So great price point. Um, we're not taking it to the Genesis level, but we wanted to do some upgrades. So we have completely retooled the body, uh, adjusted all the rivet and bolt detail to be accurate. We have added additional uh, details to the end of the car, including a uh, mounting place for coupler cup levers, updating brake detail. Unfortunately, the sample, I spent a lot of time upgrading the molded on 
uh, platform there, and that got broke off in transit. Um, we have added um, jack pad mounts to the car. We have respaced the stirrup mounts or grab iron mounts, added the notch into it. So adding some really nice detail to take a, a fairly basic standard car up a level, but still keep it at an affordable price point. And if you think that's not enough, I've got one more. <laughs> this one, no one knows about. <laughs> Anybody like Canadian Pacific? Uh, Canadian modelers? Anybody model intermodal? Ooh, 60 foot high cube intermodal container. Canadian Tire. This one, uh, once I saw the prototype, I just had to model it. So we are doing the, both the Singamas and the Dong Feng. Uh, there's actually three phases of this container. We're gonna offer the latter two. Uh, so this is the, the Dong Feng, and I have the Singamas version here as well. This is gonna be offered in the after line. We have the photo etched placards. Uh, there's a total of eight on this, two on each side, and separately applied door closures, which are different between the two versions. But very excited for this. These are not yet available for pre-order, even though I'm holding them in my hands. But wait, these are coming soon. And just so you know, this is a hand-painted and hand-lettered sample. There are some inaccuracies on the decals. <laughs> 57 decals on that sucker. On one side. One side. But beautiful, fun, fun uh, container. In Canada, they would run uh, double 48 tra um, trailers on the highways. And often they will max out the volume of a container before they get to the weight. So, because they're running such a long uh, road train, essentially, they decided to opt to go up to a 60 foot. In the United States, we're not seeing them yet. Um, although in Texas, I know there are 60 foot uh, trailers being used. So the potential are they're coming south of the border at some point. Um, these sit on top of uh, 40, 48, 53 foot trailer uh, containers and container trains. But what they're finding is because of the extra length, they're actually reducing the drag in the train because there's less space between the containers. Very excited about this, this kind of fun little option. There you go. We have Versa coils available for pre-order today. F units, these are actually going to be, um, in the previous two announcements, are going to be delivered in this uh, body configuration, uh, as is the last announcement of 52-foot mill guns will be coming with this, this new body. If you're in the, the area of the show, come on down, take a look at it, and uh, ask questions. Yeah. I'd be happy to answer them let you take a closer look at these. Where'd, uh, where'd you guys get the idea for the uh, versus wildfire? <laughs> Apple um, has a lot of freight cars, a lot of projects. We do not have a steel coil car. And we wanted to offer it because there's so many uh, so many variations out there. Uh, the Versa coil was one that we felt was unique and was new enough uh, being built in the uh, early 2000s to today that we would still continue to see them on the railroads for 40 years. So there's plenty of opportunity for additional code names now. That's great. Thanks so much for sharing this with us. Uh, my name is Otto Bondrick. I am the editor of Railroad Model Crashing. We're here live at West Springfield at the Edward Stream Show. This is uh, the Akron booth. Come on out. We're here in the Mallory building. And uh, we'll be sharing some snapshots with you shortly. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.